Hey guys, so today we are going to talk a little bit about something that I think has gone missing for quite some time in the, this world of programming that we all live in. I had a subscriber who reached out yesterday and basically said, Frederick, I am so tired of all this stuff about programming. There's so, so much stuff. Like, I mean, I, I, there's still, it seems to be so much stuff to learn to be a professional programmer. I just want to build websites. Like, how can I learn how to just do that? So that's what we're going to talk about. How to simply build a website. Because the thing is, guys, a lot of the content that you find on the internet has this it's it's kind of funny because this kind of ties into what I've been saying in a few other videos where I try to help you define the differences between a professional level programmer and a hobby level programmer because this person is, is expressing something that is very true if you are a hobby level programmer or somebody somebody who is not looking to work for say Google or Facebook or one of these massive IT companies like at that sort of scale, but rather somebody who wants to build either websites for yourself or for your spouse or your friends, or yes, maybe uh, you want to start your own small consultancy where you just want to do development for, you know, client, a, kind of on a client by client basis. And maybe your clients are not necessarily big industry titans or even large companies, then the needs that they have are going to be fairly simple. This is one of the reasons why, say, WordPress is such a popular tool for regular day, you know, website needs, let's call it that. Because it simply is, you know, it's, it's a simple way to get a website up and running. And when people are talking to you about everything from load balancers to Docker to cloud solutions to, you know, a performance optimization, should you use Go, should you use Node, should you use whatever, you know, all these different options. It's get, and I understand that, and I'm sorry that that's the way it is. I, it, I mean, it was, it was really confusing to me as well when I first started. And it is confusing because it's kind of this catch-22 where you have to know how everything works in order to understand what is professional, like what you need to know in order to write professional, like large-scale systems and what you need to know in order to simply make a website. Now I am working on videos where we will kind of touch on this as well, but I wanted to just kind of cut through all of that and just get to the point in one of these vlog videos. So the way that you should think about just creating regular day websites is this. Keep it simple, stupid. Because the thing is, if somebody tells you that you need to use, say, Docker for creating a website, what they may fail to, like, what they may assume is a few things. They may assume that you have a need for a distributed system or that you have a need for a container management system something of that nature. If that's not your case, which it's not gonna be if you have a single web server, if you're just making a simple website, there's no need for you to use, say, Docker. And then you throw that out, out, the, out the window. All right, do you need a load balancer? Well, no, if you don't have the sort of traffic that needs a load balancer, and if you're not going to reverse proxy things with, as we say, talk about Docker, if you're not using a distributed system, then that kind of goes out the window too. You don't need that either. And you can kind of ship away on things until you reach one fundamental thing. And that is the bare bone basics of how a web application works. And that's the ideal case for you. You should use, if you just want to write or make websites, I'll tell you how to do that in the easiest way possible. You're going to need HTML, you're going to need CSS, you're going to need JavaScript, most likely. I'm not saying that you have to have JavaScript, but it's very likely that you want to do something with JavaScript on your page. These are the three bare bone basics of showing a UI to a user. And then finally, you need a server side language, something that allows you to create some logic with some endpoints, in other words, the different links or routes that you go to when you visit a website. So you can go to your frequently asked questions page or your home page or your product page or whatever. And there is one very simple technology that does this better than any other technology that has the simplest possible user experience, a developer experience, in my opinion, when it comes to web development, and that is PHP. 
PHP is by far the best programming language in the world for a beginner and even up to like a fairly high level, like I would say even to some extent in professional capacities as well. It's a very, very good language for standard web development. It's great at it actually. So if you just want to write simple web pages, PHP is a really good first stop. If you're in more interested in JavaScript and stuff of that nature, then you can of course use Node. It's going to fill your purposes as well, even though PHP is most likely easier for you to adopt. And apart from that, once you like, all you have to do, you can actually just run your like you, you just run your project on your on your local computer. You simply spin up. You use a project such as let's say Vamp or Samp or Lamp or you just run Apache, PHP, and so forth by yourself, like just on, directly on your machine. And once you can go to say localhost 8080 or whatever port number you're using and just get a working website and everything is working, then you're pretty much done with creating the application itself. Now the next step becomes, okay, now you need somewhere to put it. Now, there are a few hosts that we call them that simply host websites and a lot of them is, are actually very specialized in PHP. So it's a fairly strong choice for that. And then you need a DNS address or a, D, a domain basically. So you buy that, you go to a DNS provider such as say GoDaddy or what, whichever one you want to use. And then you, see, you have to pay for that, of course. So it's, a little, it's not that expensive. And then you need a hosting service, which also costs a little bit of money. Some of them actually offer both, that they will host, uh, host your application and your domain at the same time, which is great. And then you fo basically just follow their steps, upload your code to their systems, and then you're done. Now you have a website. That's all there is to it. It's actually that simple. As long as you, if you know how to do basic, say, PHP programming, and you know these other, like CSS, HTML, and JavaScript, you have all the knowledge you need to create a basic standard w website. That's all there is to it. Then you can come into talking about, say, databases and that sort of thing once, if you have that sort of need. But most likely this is going to keep you set for, for, the, like, for the long run. Like it's, not every website needs a database. Some do, some, do, some don't. So that would be the next thing to look into if you want to expand on, on this, uh, this concept. And I hope that we can kind of touch on something here before we end. What I just said, these four things, CSS, HTML, JavaScript, and say PHP. This is everything you need. That's all, that's all of it for creating a web page, a standard website. So when people are telling you about Angular, React, or like all these more fancier tools, or they're talking about GraphQL or Docker or Kubernetes, all of these topics are usually associated with professional grade software development. Now you don't have to use them as a, just because like, not every professional uses them, but they are very common in the professional world. But these things are for more advanced levels of software development or website producing websites basically but at its core creating a simple website it is not that difficult so if you're just looking to create websites because you think it's fun or because you want to start your own small business or something like that you're not looking to become a super engineer at google or facebook or wh wherever it doesn't even have to be at that scale you don't you're not looking to become a professional grade software developer who a polyglot that like, can work in all the technologies and all that stuff. This is going to keep you, it's going to be good enough for you. By, it's going to cover basically everything you want to be able to do when it comes to web development. So what I want you to take away from this, basic website development is actually very straightforward. Server-side language such as PHP, so CSS, so you can style things. HTML, so you actually have a HTML document to send to the to the client, so that they can actually see something on, you know, so that there is a website site, and some basic JavaScript in order to do whatever you want to do with JavaScript, like animating things or whatever. It doesn't have to be that, but it can be a few things, and that's it. That's all there is to it. Then you just have a host and upload it to your website and you're done. You don't have to bother with Docker. You don't have to talk about load balancing, listen to load balancers or functional programming or um, GraphQL or all this other st fancy stuff. There is no way a reason for you to buy into all that stuff because that the things that I just mentioned, that is the bare bone, bread and butter, everyday basics of software development and how to produce a website. Have a great day.